Hey guys, welcome back to the Kubernetes series. In the deployments chapter of this series, we have seen how to scale our deployments manually. That way, whenever there is unusual traffic, we can scale our deployments accordingly. But monitoring our traffic continuously and manually scaling our application to handle such traffic spikes is a tedious process. What if there is a way to monitor our pods and scale them automatically whenever there is an increase in CPU usage, memory or some other metric like queries per second? This is called auto scaling, scaling automatically based on some metrics. Kubernetes can do that job for us. Not only pods, if you are running on cloud infrastructure, Kubernetes can spin up additional nodes if the existing nodes can't accept any more pods. In this chapter, we will learn how many types of autoscalers are available in Kubernetes and how do they work with complete hands-on. So without any further delay, let's get started. Kubernetes offers three types of autoscalers, namely horizontal pod autoscaler, vertical pod autoscaler and cluster autoscaler. Horizontal pod autoscaler increases the number of replicas whenever there is a spike in CPU, memory or some other metric. That way, the load is distributed among the pods. And as we are increasing the number of pods, this is called scaling up. Increasing number of replicas with horizontal pod autoscaler is not always a solution. For example, we can make a database handle more connections by increasing the memory and CPU. In such cases, we need to increase the resources of existing pods instead of creating new pods. With vertical pod autoscaler, we can analyze the resources of a deployment and adjust them accordingly to handle the load. Please note that with vertical pod autoscaler, we increase the resources of existing pods instead of creating new pods. And finally, if there is no capacity in the cluster, it doesn't make any sense to increase the number of pods with horizontal pod autoscaler or increase the resources with vertical pod autoscaler. As needed, we should be able to add nodes to the cluster automatically to accommodate the more number of pods. Cluster Autoscaler can do the job for us. It adds the nodes to the cluster if there are any pods stuck in pending state because of lack of resources in the cluster. Not only scaling up, these three autoscalers can scale down also, meaning decreasing number of pods, decreasing the resources and decreasing the number of nodes when there is no load. Let us learn about these three autoscalers in detail with complete hands-on starting with horizontal pod autoscaler. Let's say our application is an e-commerce application and on a big billion sale, we get so many orders. When there is such unusual traffic, our application should be able to serve all the users without any downtime. For that, when demand increases, the app should scale up that is increasing the number of replicas to stay responsive. And when demand decreases, the app should scale down that is decreasing the number of replicas to not waste any resources. But how does Kubernetes know when to scale up or when to scale down a deployment? For that, Kubernetes offers a resource named Horizontal Pod Autoscaler. With Horizontal Pod Autoscaler, we can instruct Kubernetes when and how to scale our deployment based on a specific metric. Let us see how Horizontal Pod Autoscaler works. In Kubernetes architecture, we learned that on every worker node, Kubelet runs. And there is an agent in Kubelet called C Advisor or Container Advisor by Google. When we have our pods running on the worker node, this C advisor can scrape the pod CPU and memory usage for every 10 seconds. And for every minute, the metric server will aggregate those metrics and expose them to the Kubernetes API server. And the horizontal pod autoscaler controller queries the API server for every 15 seconds for these metrics. Once this controller gets the desired pod metrics, it checks these metrics against our definition and decides to scale up or scale down our replicas. Please note that this HPA controller just updates the replica count in the target deployment. Spinning up a new pod or deleting the existing pod will be taken care by the replication controller. And C Advisor starts collecting metrics of the new pod as well. Horizontal Pod Autoscaler uses this formula to calculate the number of replicas. In this formula, 
D is the desired number of replicas. A is the actual or current number of replicas. C is the current value of the metric and T is the target value. Let us understand this by an example. Let's say we have a deployment with two pods and both pods are consuming 90% of the CPU on an average. But assume that we define to scale our deployments when the CPU usage is 70%. For every 15 seconds, horizontal pod autoscaler calculates the desired number of replicas. Now this gives rise to three pods instead of both pods struggling. Not only deployment, but we can also scale stateful sets, replica sets with horizontal pod autoscaler. We can even define multiple metrics for scaling like based on CPU and memory. When autoscaling is based on multiple pods, the autoscaler calculates the replica count for each metric individually and then takes the highest value. In this case, four replicas. In summary, the purpose of horizontal pod autoscaler is to calculate the replica count that brings the current metric value as close as possible to the target value. Let's see this in action. For this purpose, I have created a simple Spring Boot API with a stress endpoint. When this API is fired, this code gets executed which creates some load on the CPU. Let's deploy this API with Kubernetes deployment. So this is the deployment manifest for the utility API. Here we are giving the two replicas. Please refer to the deployments chapter of this series to get a better understanding on how a deployment works. Also we will create the Kubernetes service to access this application. Now let us define the horizontal pod autoscaler for this deployment. This min replicas and max replicas indicate to scale up our deployment to maximum of 5 replicas if the average CPU usage is more than 70% and to scale down to a minimum of 1 replica when the CPU is not being used. Let's apply this just like we applied any other Kubernetes resource. First let's apply the deployment of our Spring Boot application. kubectl apply f deployment.yaml Let's apply the service also to access this application. And finally, let's apply the horizontal pod autoscaler. Awesome! All the resources we need to demonstrate the horizontal pod autoscaler are ready. So the expectation is that horizontal pod autoscaler controller should scrape the metrics of our pods. Because here we gave the scaling target reference as the utility API that we just deployed. kubectl get pods. Now we have two pods running. Let's list down the metrics of these pods. If you are new to metrics, please watch the resource management chapter of this series to understand how to enable metrics server and how to play with these metrics. As you can see, the CPU usage is 2 millicores and the memory it is consuming is 89 mebibytes. Did you observe one thing? We defined two replicas in our deployment, but here we can see only one pod. If you list on the pods again, kubectl get pods, we can see only one pod. This is because the average CPU usage of our deployment is less than 70% and here we define to scale down our application to one replica if there is no load on the pods. And as our application is just consuming 2 millicores, it scaled down to one pod. We can verify that horizontal pod autoscaler scaled it down by describing the horizontal pod autoscaler. So kubectl get hpa which is the short name for the horizontal pod autoscaler and as you can see only 1% of the CPU is being used and the current replicas are 1. And now let's try to describe this hpa. kubectl describe hpa and hpa name. As you can see, the new size is 1 and the reason is all metrics are below the target. So this is how horizontal pod autoscaler works. So we have seen the horizontal pod autoscaler automatically scaled down the pods because the CPU usage was less than 70%. Now let us try to add some load onto the pods and see what happens. For that, I am just creating a simple alpine pod from which I can easily communicate to the utility API. So let's apply this kubectl apply f traffic generator.yaml. So it created a simple alpine pod. Now let's try to get into this pod kubectl 
exec iphan it pod name iphan iphan sh so now we are in the traffic generator alpine pod now our job is to generate the load on the utility api pods so that the cpu utilization goes beyond 70 percent and we can see how the pods are scaling up automatically so for that all we need to do is call the stress api continuously so that the cpu usage goes up here i want to introduce to a http benchmarking tool called wrk with wrk we can generate the load onto the pods seamlessly by writing a simple command so let's go to the pod and install the wrk with apk add wrk cool wrk tool is installed now let's simulate the load with a simple command here we are making five connections with five threads for the duration of 300 seconds to a utility api service and as you can see i'm just firing the stress endpoint so let's enter now let's open the new tab and see the pod metrics kubectl top pods as you can see the cpu usage is increased to 43 millicores and the memory usage is increased to one or two megabytes. let's wait for some time because it takes a while for the c advisor to get the cpu metrics and also for the metric server to collect them before the autoscaler can take action let's try to list on the metrics again as you can see the utility api pods are increased to five this is the power of horizontal pod autoscaler now let's try to get the hpa kubectl get hpa as you can see the cpu usage is more than 70 percent and because we restricted the maximum pods to five it is only scaled up to five if you could have given the higher value for the maximum replicas the more number of pods would have been created so as you can see the load is distributed across the pods we can also verify that by describing the hpa as you can see the new size was one and then it increased to four the reason is cpu resource was more than the target and later it went to five with the same reason so now the 300 seconds that we defined here was over and the double arcade tool stopped firing our stress api so now the expectation is that the cpu usage of our pod should go down and the extra parts that were created should get deleted because there will not be any cpu usage now let's try to list down the metrics of the pods as you can see the cpu usage went down to two milli cores in the each pod and now the hpa controller should take a action of scaling these pods down to one replica because this cpu usage is less than 70 percent let's get the hpa kubectl get hpa as you can see the cpu is almost zero percent so now let's wait for the hpa controller to take the action so let's watch the pods kubectl get pods iphone w as you can see all the pods are getting terminated now let's try to list on the pods and we are left with only one pod because there is no cpu usage i hope you understand how to increase or decrease the number of replicas with horizontal pod autoscaler now let's look at the vertical pod autoscaler vertical scaling means increasing or decreasing the compute resources of a replica without vertical pod autoscaler if we over allocate the resources with request and limits our cost increases if they are not fully used and if we under allocate the resources and they are full our application performance will suffer and the kubelet may kill the pods vertical pod autoscaler helps us to solve these two issues vertical pod autoscaler performs three steps first it reads the resource metrics of our deployment similar to the hpa based on these metrics it recommends the resource requests and if we prefer to auto update it it updates the resources if you are new to resources and limits please watch the resource management chapter of this series let's see this in action let's go to the vs code and look at the simple vertical pod autoscaler manifest here our target is the same utility api and the update mode we are just preferring off for this demo and this update mode can be of three values auto off and initial auto means apply the recommendations that are suggested by the vertical pod autoscaler directly by updating the pods off means it just gives you the recommendations but it doesn't update the replicas and initial means it applies the recommended values only to the new created pods please note that update mode off is preferred in the production 
The reason is that when vertical pod autoscaler applies the changes, the pods will be restarted, which might cause the workload disruption. So the best practice is we should set the update mode to off in production and feed this recommendation to a capacity monitoring dashboard like Grafana and apply the recommendations in the next deployment cycle. Let's apply this vertical pod autoscaler and see what happens. Let's go to the terminal. kubectl apply iphone f vpa.yaml. Oops, there is something wrong. It says that Vertical pod autoscaler is not found. The reason is that by default vertical pod autoscaler is not available in our cluster. We need to install it explicitly by cloning this repository. Let's clone that. The repository is cloned. This repository is being maintained by the Kubernetes. Now let's get into the repository and run this command to install the vertical pod autoscaler. As you can see the vertical pod autoscaler is installed. Now let's try to apply the vertical pod autoscaler. As you can see, the vertical pod autoscaler is created. We can verify that with kubectl get VPA. As you can see, this is the VPA that we just created. Let's try to describe this VPA. Here the lower bound is the minimum estimation for the container and the upper bound is the maximum recommendation resource estimation for the container. So indirectly lower bound is the request and upper bound is the limits. So that's how the vertical pod autoscaler recommends us the resources instead of guessing the request and limits for our application. Well, now we know how to scale up and scale down our application both horizontally and vertically. But what if we don't have the enough capacity in the cluster to scale our pods? For example, when a pod requests one CPU but the cluster has only 0.5 CPU available, the scheduler marks the pod as unschedulable. We have seen this in the advanced scheduling chapter of this series. In this case, we have multiple options. The first option is free up resources in the cluster by deleting unwanted workloads. Second option is manually adding the new nodes. And the third option is let Kubernetes deal with adding nodes automatically whenever there is a need. Obviously, why would someone want to struggle when there is an automated approach? So we need third option. That's where cluster autoscaler comes into the picture. It checks for any unschedulable pods for every 10 seconds. Once one or more unschedulable pods are detected by the cluster autoscaler, it will run an algorithm to decide how many nodes are necessary to deploy all pending pods and what type of nodes should be created. The same goes for the downscaling. For every 10 seconds, the cluster autoscaler decides to remove a node only when the resource utilization falls below 50%. As cluster autoscaler detected one pod in the unschedulable state, it will create a new node and automatically the scheduler will schedule this unschedulable pod onto the new node. Please note that the cluster autoscaler doesn't look at the memory or CPU available when it triggers the autoscaling. It looks at the unschedulable pods. If you are using AWS, the cluster autoscaler will provision a new ECT instance. If you are on Azure, it will create a new virtual machine. And if you are on GCP, it will create a new compute engine. I'm sorry to say that we can't demonstrate cluster autoscaler on Minikube. But if you are on any cloud infrastructure, you can give it a shot and let me know in the comment section if you face any issues. I have added the link in the description for the cluster autoscaler. I'm sure that you understood how autoscaling works in Kubernetes. My name is Pavanil Tepu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.